Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Best and Worst. Uh, we're here to talk about the best things in Epcot. So uh, we have a list, five to one, uh, and we'll round them off. I'm here with Oliver Green. Hello, everyone. That was that was that was weird. Wait, <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> I'm here as well. <laughs> um, but all right, uh, you want to just get yeah, into let's it? Just jump right into uh, it. I'm, right I'm into interested. It. All right, so for my number five, I have. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing this right because I can't even have something on my list that I can say correctly. <laughs> but Katsura Grill, it's the quick service yeah. in Japan. This is a place that I didn't even know about. Like I, you know, I did the college program and I didn't even know existed. It's just kind of tucked away in the Japan Japan Pavilion, excuse me. Yep. Um, and I, you know, never even give it give it the light of day for the longest time. And it's really good. There's like chicken teriyaki and like beef udon and uh, ramen and all this really really good stuff. And so I would say it's one of those quick services that like really is worth it like it's yeah. an experience and it's for the prices of quick service no i agree i recently did a vlog on this and like i was blown away the uh, and this, this sounds like such a like a big boy thing to say but we pay so much for food in disney whether it's quick service or not and sometimes the portion sizes do not reflect like what you've paid mm -hmm. and they don't always fill fill you well they don't fill me up i can't speak for anybody else like you know on behalf of anyone else but here they do like they give you like normal size plates and yeah. it's like oh this is like a portion i would serve at home to oh, myself yeah so, exactly and it tastes really good like it's, i love it there yeah it's like a full meal it's not yeah. just like a cheeseburger or yeah. something it's like a full plate of food that you yep. get so you walk away and you feel full like yeah. you and it's it's nice to be able to do that because well, you know you and, don't always and it's good for a park like epcot that you might be having a couple drinks in so yes. to have have that fill up your stomach to then feel like you can oh i'm not gonna feel sick if yeah. i have a couple of drinks it is kind of like all the right foods as well like rice noodles like this <laughs> yeah. is the food that soaks up the alcohol yeah so. exactly um and not to mention it just looks nice there like yeah. the outdoor seating area is themed so well because like you said it's tucked away so you don't know where it is yeah so it's, it is almost like its own retreat to explain to people if you don't know because we didn't know for a long time yeah but if you're looking at the pavilion straight on it's to the left um, yeah. kind of opposite of Tempanetto and the uh, the stores and everything. So it's kind of up on a hill too. So up past the little koi pines and stuff. I think that's why it's missed so much because we're tra with Disney and like the way they do their theming and everything. Like you, we're so used to seeing like um, forced perspective where stuff's up on a hill and mm -hmm. it's like, oh, well, we know in our head it's not real. Yeah, but right. there it is. It's <laughs> yeah, like, that's right. a real building. It's you like, can go and eat in that's there. That's probably not a real thing, but yeah. it actually is. Yeah, <laughs> go so, in there. It's, yeah, it's really check good. it out. So yeah. uh, what's your number five? Number five for me, I have got the staying in japan um and i want to pronounce it correctly uh the mitsukoshi i believe that's right sounds right that sounds store right. in japan um i agree it's so good it's huge it's a giant store and it yeah. has lots of stuff that's not just disney stuff there's yeah. lots of like really like i mean i've never been to japan but actually me and my brother were discussing this when we last time my brother was here it was like the one store that you go into and you're like, now I kind of want to go to Japan because of this yeah. store. It actually sells it to you. Like you see the stuff in there and it's, it doesn't feel Disney when you walk in. There's yeah. no like Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse. You know, it is like this is genuine Japanese products. And mm -hmm. there's just a lot going on. It, it manages, even though it's just a retail store, it manages to pour like an atmosphere into it. Yeah. Um, you've got the, um, I don't know the exact name, but they're, I think they're diving for like pearls or they've got mm -hmm. the pearl thing going on where they're like, they're on the drum yeah, and then yeah. the gong. And it's just fun to watch. And they and sell, now now i feel really dumb but they sell like the uh gowns the um you know what i'm talking yes, about yes i've i know the name of these i forgot like because yeah. we're recording all of us now that we're on the spot i can't remember yeah the name they um <sighs> worn by geishas i've completely yeah. forgot but you know what i'm talking about they yeah, have that section yeah. and then they have you know they have that whole back section with the foods like the candy and everything yeah, the fun um, candy and they have like this little sake bar yeah it's a really cool it's a really good shop that's one of uh craig and Corey's favorite places the sake bar at the back so it's, yeah, yeah they it's love a nice it little there. hidden spot there's never yeah. like a line or anything in there so. no there's not at all and spot. every time as well just to like if i had to pick a favorite product out um those boards that are like you uh, paint on them with water and it's kind of like a really it's like an etch-a-sketch it's like a Japanese etch-a-sketch because as it dries it goes away oh yeah they're so fun yeah sometimes I like to paint like a little Mickey on there or something I'll put like our website on there so uh, I always think of the marketing yeah. so if you ever go in there and you see like you know WDW info on there we're, at, we're nearby <laughs> <laughs> that's funny um, all right so I'll move on to my number four yes. I have test track and if I had done this list 
however many years ago before the like refurb, Test Track probably would have been higher on my list. I think the Tron update isn't personally my favorite thing. I yeah. think the old update of it being like a cra- you were a crash test dummy was a really cool thing, but um, still a great attraction. It's still I think it's still like the fastest attraction on, on Walt, blah, 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 Walt Disney World property. Excuse me, I can't talk. But um, yeah, it's just a f- super fun attraction. Um, yeah, it, I agree. I it's I, I I don't hate the Tron update. Like I do prefer how it was before, but I just it's it's one of those where it's like oh it's different. It's not better. Yeah. It's just different when yeah, they guess, change it over. I guess they have to change it every once in a while to keep things fresh. And yeah, um, I just I like the fact that it's a a big attraction, a good thrill attraction that has a single rider line. Just about to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. and it's, that's a huge thing. I I mean I was there the other night and it was essentially walk on for single riders. Yeah, and so. the the reason for that as well is for those um, that might not know the seating configuration is three and three. Which is a very uncommon. Yep. Most families, it's like a family of four. So yep. then you have two empty seats next two to you. Two single riders. Yeah, right. <laughs> two single riders. Yep. Or like, yeah, most families don't work out to be three and three or six or whatever. So yeah. And it's always a good idea to take um, advantage of that single rider line purely because the wait times for that attraction often exceed like 100 minutes. It's yeah. crazy how busy that gets. And, you know, it does deserve it because it is fun. It's a lot of fun. It's one of those, it's kind of like a thrill attraction that you can still take your grandma on. You know, yeah, it's yep, like, yeah. it ticks that box. Because even though it is a fast attraction, it goes like 60 something miles an hour, it's a, essentially a car with the top down. Yeah, it is. So, you, you, yeah, you go around a bank, banked uh, turn, but, you yeah. know, it's definitely something that it's more family friendly than, say, Space Mountain or yeah. one of the other thrill attractions. The, the irony is people probably drove faster than it goes yeah. to get to the park <laughs> right, that day exactly. so it's but it's still fun it's a lot of fun so yeah it's good what, right. what number was that was that number that number four so number four you, yeah. my number four i was getting that into it i was forgetting okay this will be fun my number four for the epcot not to be missed attractions um is the american adventure oh so i love it that much this was for those of you um that have watched the previous episode this was actually on steve's things to be missed list um, and remind me again, why did you hate it? I just I love Hall of Presidents that much more than it. I just okay. think I don't get the patriotic goosebumps when I watch this. I just it's informative and it's good, and I think it's good for maybe someone that wasn't born in America. <laughs> uh, but I think it, you know, it just doesn't give me like the patriotic feeling that Hall of Presidents does. So in comparison, that's why it was on my list. See, I've I've grown with this attraction. Whenever I used to visit from the UK, and I think I'm I'm pretty solid when I say this, speaking on behalf of visitors from the UK, we go and watch that, and when we come out, we're looking at each other like, "What was that?" Like this is really, yeah. It's like um, it, I imagine it feels it feels to people not from America when you go and watch that how it feels to the people of like um, North Korea. Like, oh <laughs> wow, know, not to be too. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get some hate for that, but, but like, I know it's... I kind of understand what you're saying. Like, it does probably feel like propaganda. Yeah, it does. That's the word I'm looking for. But, it but does. I think the way that we see it, wow. Like saying well, this, this, I see what you're saying. No, this is what I was saying. Like, this is on yeah. my this. I'm, this isn't my bad list. This is my good list. And I was. It used to be from when I was a visitor in this country. Like, look at all this America. Look at all this Yankee propaganda. Now I come out of there. I'm like. That's me. I'm an American. <laughs> like, America. I love it. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, I I see what you're saying. But I don't know. I just, I love that stuff, though. Even though it was on my list. I love, like, I don't know. I But I feel like if I were from another, if I was from Canada and they had, like, and I went into O Canada, I'd be like, yeah, Canada. Yeah, I suppose. But, but that might, maybe that's an American thing. <laughs> I don't go into the Canadian pavilion. I'm like, oh, they're trying to shove this down my throat. I come out of that one, I'm like, America. Yeah. Like, well, they were trying their hardest. To- <laughs> literally, like, there's the whole song at the end. It's like, America, spread, spread your golden, golden wings. Sail on freedom's wings. Something across, across the, the sky. sky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it definitely is. A li- now that you mentioned it, it's definitely a little propaganda but- Oh, yeah. Not just a little wow. bit. A that, that, that's like an eye-opener almost. But, all right. Um, Still fun, though. Still fun. Yeah, it that's is That's why it's on my best list. I, Don't miss it. And I, uh, yeah. I mean, well, I say miss it, but I say spend your time at Hall Presidents, but okay. Oh, what I will say before we move on, though, is um, don't be put off by the Voices of Liberty, because, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get so much hate for this. Don't, I can't stand the Voices of Liberty. Really? Voice, yeah, Voices of Liberty is too much. That's to, the, like, the, the the show, even though it's very patriotic, it's almost like, like, comedic. Like, it's like, oh, look at them again. They're mm-hmm. trying the hardest. Voices of Liberty is like, 
It's like they're trying to recruit me. I just can't like. Really, I yeah. really like Voices of Liberty. <laughs> no, it's too much for me. Too ah, Voices of Liberty. I have like to step Christmas outside. Stuff too. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just. There's that one song they do where they go through all the states, and I'm just there like, oh, come on, like, come on, it's, come on. <laughs> it's time you're, to go now. You're like, like tapping the people around you that you're with, like, we got to get out of here. Yeah, but it's, it, oh, I, I love honest. it. I don't know. All right, you're weird, but let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, number three, I have, I, I asked Craig to pronounce this before, and I'm probably not going to say it wrong, but... La Cava de del Tequila. Oh, the place where you buy the tequilas yeah, in Mexico. Yeah, the tequila bar in the Mexican pavilion. I really, I don't know. It's just a nice little spot. And like, they're really good on social media so that you know that they really care about what their like bar is. And like, yeah. I just feel like it's like a tucked away little spot that like sometimes there are, depending on when you're visiting Epcot, there can be long lines here. And what time of day you go, there can be long lines. Um, but I just, I don't know. I just like the whole like, it's a bar that's like kind of a small little hole in the wall. Yeah. It, for you know, there's not a lot of hole in the wall type places in in uh, Walt Disney World. So I don't know. It's just a nice little tucked away spot in the air conditioning. It's also for me like a fun way if you're gonna be you know drinking at Epcot to kind of start your day. Yeah. You just start off with that tequila and just yeah. Like, <laughs> it <laughs> sets you up for the day. Yeah. It's like your morning coffee of the alcohol <laughs> world. Um, it's. It's a favorite of the other members of the disc team as well, um, including myself. You've got to make sure you go to that bar specifically because if you go and get a drink anywhere else in the Mexico Pavilion, you might be disappointed because it's not the same. Mm -hmm. That's all I I'll say. So Yeah, I definitely agree. All yeah. right, so uh, what's your number three? Number three for me is... Oh, this is a fun one. It'll be interesting to see what you think. If you've been on it yet. Okay. Um, the Frozen Forever yeah. After Attraction. So yeah. this was one that when it was announced... I wanted to hate it because I love Maelstrom. Everyone does. You know, I've not met anyone that's like, oh, yeah, Maelstrom. That's that's average. Everyone had this love for Maelstrom that I also had. And it was like, they're taking that away from me to mm -hmm. replace it with Frozen. And every inch of me was like, right, I'm ready to knock this. Yeah. I went on it. I've been on it more than once. I've been on it like three or four times. Really good. They did such a good job yeah. with it. It's actually a lot of fun, so I can't call it. Yeah, I think it's a great attraction, too. I think it's given... It gets a lot of hate. I also... Yeah. I think some of the hate, though, comes from the fact that it has a really long line. Which is always, new, you know, that's expected with a, a new, attraction. new attraction. You can't help that. And I think it will definitely be... I think why it probably missed my list is because I totally agree with you. I think it's a really great attraction. I think they did a really, really good job with it. I think if it's if we're doing a list of what's worth it or not, for me, it just that weight just barely made it. So for me, personally, mm -hmm. it was not worth it. For You know, but... That doesn't mean if you're here for your only visit in a year or whatever, and you have to wait an hour to do this brand new attraction, definitely go do it. You know, yeah. like it's a great attraction for sure. Yeah, no, I, I agree, and that's that's why it made it on my list. It's just it's a nice, it's fun, it's yeah. fun for everyone. It's another one where it attracts every member of the family, really. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I like that a lot. What's my, next? My on fiance Michaela loves it too. I just have to give her the shout out. Um, <laughs> for my number two, uh, have Spaceship Earth. I just feel like it's a classic. Like it's almost like going. You gotta if you go to the Magic Kingdom, you gotta ride like pirates. Yes. Where you know for Epcot, you gotta ride Spaceship Earth. It's you know a little outdated, a little like cheesy or whatever, but it's such a just a classic. You know it, you got to get that full Epcot experience, and mm -hmm. to get that full experience, you have to go on Spaceship Earth. I completely agree. So. I absolutely love it. So it never actually made it onto my list. Now it's angry. I couldn't get it on my list. So I'm glad you put yeah. it on yours. It's just such. This is another one that we've we've said this before. Like it's educational, but it's fun. Like yeah. you really enjoy that attraction when you go on it. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I love Spaceship Earth so much. Yeah, it's it's just a great attraction. I also think for people out there that don't know, if you're kind of a beginner watching this. Um, Wait till the more towards after two or three o'clock because if you try to go in the morning, this is an attraction that can get eighty minute waits now. Yeah, for, now that they have fast pass, which they used to never have, um, and you never it never broke like a twenty minute wait on a busy yeah. day, which is, is yeah, sad. that's part of Fast Pass Plus, unfortunately. Yeah. But um, so yeah, don't go right in the morning. It's just not worth it. If you wait till after two or three o'clock, you're gonna see at the very most fifteen minute waits. And that's what, you know, because it's not an attraction that's worth 80 minutes. 
It's, it's just not. No, it's definitely not, but it's still But it's, it's still a, a lot classic of fun. attraction that you just wait towards the end of the day and it's, it's n- not an attraction that's worth 80 minutes purely because the spectrum of wait time that that goes through in the day, like you see both ends. Like right, right, even right. on the busiest days, if you go at the right time, it's a walk on. Like it's yeah. just it's because it's like the first thing people see. Yeah, it's well, like, oh, and it's well, a lot of gonna do that. Yeah, it's a lot of first timers that walk in and say, "Oh, you can actually go in there." Yes, and then they just get right in line without even knowing what it is. And those people should eventually go on the attraction. Yeah, but like, don't wait in the eight, eighty minute lines. It's a really good point to make there. Cause like, for when the first few times I went to Epcot as a child, for that reason, we never went on. It's like, oh, it's really busy. We'll just come back later. Like, mm-hmm. we know this goes down. We never went on it. Like for the first few years, I came really? just yeah because. When you're leaving, it's like, we're so tired. Yeah, we've just right, walked right. around World Showcase. Let's just go home. Like, yeah, we'll, just just go home. we'll, we'll do it next time. And yeah. You never do it. So. Interesting. All right, so what's your number two? Number two on my list. Oh, I love this one. This is this this was almost number one, but I, I didn't want to seem like I had a problem. Um, The Wine Walk. The $20 oh, yeah. amazing value Wine Walk. It's so much fun. And like... Epcot is in a different vein than the other Disney parks. If you go to Epcot, it's a more adult park. There is going to be drinking there. Like, I'm not saying you should go out and get drunk, not by any means, but you should experience what it has to offer if you're, you know, if you do partake in a beverage. Um, and the wine walk's a really good value way of doing that. So you pay your 20 bucks and you can get, um, I think it's like a three or four ounce pour of wine in Italy, Germany, and France. Yep. Um, and you just take around your little wine passport and they stamp it as you go. Um, it's a really good way of trying a spectrum of wines mm-hmm. and it's much cheaper than if you were to just go and buy, you know, some of these wines individually. So yeah. it's it's a lot of fun just for adults. Um, right. Yeah, it's makes you look forward to walking around World Showcase. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good one. I, uh, I, yeah, I think that's a good one, too. I think it's another one of those ways that you can sample something, mm. you know, and you don't have to pay like for the full experience. So. Very good, very good. Yeah. I like that one. That's a good addition. Yes. I didn't I didn't think of experiences to have yeah. for this list. That was good. I like it. Because mine was getting very attractions heavy, and I was like, oh, there's more to do there. And then this popped in my head. And I know we've both done it, but the fun thing about these shows is we don't compare our lists. It's yeah. always new to us when we, yeah. you know, say them out loud. So, And I know you've done it, and yeah. you enjoyed it as well, right? Yeah, so. yeah. It's very, it, yeah, it's nice. It's really fun. It's good value. So Yeah, it is. Yeah. No, it's a lot of fun. So uh, I'll move on to number one for Ooh. me. I'm curious because you haven't mentioned this either, so we might. I think I've I've got such a strong feeling it's uh, number one is the same. I've uh, should we it, should we count how to say it at the same right, time? Yeah, ready? Three, Three two, two, one. Soren. Yay! <laughs> yes, Soren is. I know it's just a must do. I mean, even the old Soren, the new Soren, yep. whatever. It's just you have to experience this attraction. Even if it's a long wait, I think it's, you know, we've kept mentioning there's a lot of rides that have long or long waits that aren't worth it or yes. wait, you know, wait. Even if it's a little bit of a long wait, it's not an attraction that is really going to fluctuate on its weight because it, so, it is so popular. Um, so, I mean, yeah, you might want to check on the day or on the time of day and, mm-hmm. you know, depends on when you go, but... Um, it's just a great ride, and it's worth. I think it's worth even waiting in standby. Yeah, it, it is. It really is. It's an, a fantastic attraction. It's an attraction that, and I go, I keep repeating myself, but this is one for everyone in the family. Mm-hmm. Like, I would love to bring my grandparents Grandma, to yeah. America and just be like, I'm, you're going to get blown away. This is awesome. Right. It's not scary. It's just an amazing experience, unlike anything else that you know I've ever been on that you can just share with everyone. And that's what's so nice about Soren. So what you were saying about the wait times, since they built that third theater, it's I've gone found way down. Yeah, And yeah, I've also found, I don't know if you're about to say this, sorry if I'm stealing your thing, but I've also noticed that if it says 50 or something, yeah. it's not even yeah. close to 50. It's 30 or the something. The other day I was uh, with my family when they were visiting from, um, from the UK and it said 25 minutes. And in my head I was like, that's awesome. 25 minutes for Soren. We're waiting in line. Yeah. Walked straight on. And I was I was blown away. Wow. Like, this has never happened. Yeah. Granted, it was near the end of the day. Like, maybe I just got lucky. Like, they were probably running at full capacity. Like, they were doing a good job, at, you know, getting yeah. people in. But walked straight on. It's a wow. 25 minutes. It's That's just, yeah. That doesn't happen at all. Another top tip as well, just before we move on from it, is... A lot of people love the original Soarin'. I always found that on the original Soarin', the best place to sit was front row. If you could get it front row, right at the top, there's Mm. no shoes in front of you. That was everyone's big complaint. Like, oh, I can see the feet. This one feels different, I find. I find the best place to sit is either in the middle or even at the back row. And the reason for it, yeah, it's... 
have you been you've been i have been on the new one. and i always what i always request i tell the cast member i say can i wait another round and go on the front go on b1 because that's yep. the one that everyone wants so i'm curious what what's your explanation okay so some for some reason since they've redone the video obviously all the theaters are the same it's just the video that's been redone you'll find that some of the um iconic scenes like um the uh, eiffel tower for example in mm-hmm. france the screen is curved Mm -hmm. So as it goes over the top of the Eiffel Tower, it looks, it goes like a banana and it'll go not just a little bit, it'll go a lot off to the side, like almost an unbearable amount. Like when you see the... It's like the Leaning Tower of Pisa, like... Yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. It's just like that. But it's even with the, um, the, and I think this is an even worse offender, the uh, pyramids in Egypt, Mm -hmm. like as you're flying over them, it will bend so much and you're like, oof, that is, that's That's an unforgivable amount of um, distortion. If you're sitting in the other two rows, you don't get it at all as much, especially in the back row. It looks like it's meant to the whole time. Um, And I've just found it to be a better experience now, which is weird because it's, you know, it's the same attraction, it's just a new video. But um, Well, I guess that, that in a way though, I think that's good maybe because now there's different preferences. Yeah. So hopefully now, you know, you'll have people that won't be upset wherever they sit. You yeah. Know, it's like, oh, well, oh, I'm in C3. Well, maybe this will be a good view. Because yeah. before getting like C or A3, it was like, uh, like why we waited this whole line and now yeah. we got like the worst seat in the house. But that's good to know. It's good to know people now don't have to be disappointed to have a different angle or view. Yeah. I found it actually improves it an awful lot. And the smells too. They did such a good job with the new smells. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. Didn't know you could get the smell of dirt. <laughs> yeah. They do such a good job with it. I think it's cut grass they went for. So. Yeah. But, uh, but no, that was so good with the elephants playing. Yeah. All right, so uh, should we go through our top or go through the list? Yeah, I'll let you go first. All right, let me see. Now I got to get my list up. All right, so at number five, I have Katsuro Grill. Uh, Number four, Test Track. Number three, La Cava de de Tequila. Excuse me. (laughs) You sound like you've had it. You already sound like you've had a few tequilas, as you were saying. (laughs) Uh, Number two, Spaceship Earth. And number one, Soren. Oh, cool. And then mine, um, it's a good list, by the way. I agree with, you know. Everything on there, almost. Um, <laughs> mine in descending order is number five, the uh, Mitsukoshi store in Japan. Number four is the American Adventure attraction, which is amazing. Don't listen to Steve. Go on it. Um, number three is Frozen Forever After, the uh, ride uh, in Norway. Number two is the Wine Walk. Um, and number one, of course, is everyone's favorite, Soren. Very good. All right. Well, That'll do it for uh, this episode of the Best and Worst series. Uh, if you like the episode, like and, like and comment, subscribe, whatever you need to do below. Um, uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching.